Hi, everyone. It's Takara from Magnificent You and Deep Dive Publishers. And today I wanted to share with you my journey going from what I used to do to being a best selling author, turning into a publisher, and then helping lots of other people become best selling authors and transforming their lives in the process. So it all began back when I was in junior high school. Even then, even in what they now call middle school or junior high, whatever they call it now, um, I knew I wanted to write. I knew I wanted to be an author. And my dad had one of those huge, upright, clunky typewriters that weighed a ton, you know, and I would put it in the middle of the dining room table and I would have a whole stack of typing paper right beside it. And I would carefully take out a piece of paper and I would put it into the carriage and I would turn the crank, you know, and it would set itself up to the right place on the, on the page. And then I would just pound the keys, right? Cause I didn't know how to type back in the day. We didn't text anybody. Nobody knew how to type. You had to go to a class, which didn't happen until high school where you would learn to type. So I was pretending the whole time I was pretending to type. I'd fill up the entire page. I would carefully take the page out. So proud that I'd made a whole page of, of nonsense really. And I would put it beside myself and then I would do it again. So, you know, that was way back in junior high. Fast forward to high school. I did take that typing class and I became the best person in my class. I had the, I was the fastest and had the most accuracy, which landed me a job after school working at the hospital in admissions. So I would go to school in the daytime. I would get to skip my, um, what is that called? Study hall or whatever that's called. And then I would go to work from three to 11, not every day, but you know, three, four days a week I was working a full-time, you know, shift, full shift. And I was typing, admitting people to the hospital for surgery, you know, and updating what had happened during the day for the person that couldn't do it back then, because, you know, it wasn't computerized. We had to type seven different things for every single patient. It was a lot of typing. Anyway, fast forward to going to college, you know, I got out of high school and I started putting myself through college d- using my typing skills. And Eventually, that landed me at becoming a secretary in the Department of Industrial Engineering at Virginia Tech. And there, I fell in love with engineering, but I also did a ton of typing, and it was quickly determined that I was very, very good at editing all this really technical stuff. So a lot of the other secretarial pool, we weren't called secretaries. We had some fancy name, information processing specialist, I believe we were called, right? But basically we were secretaries and um, we were paid a decent wage, far more than my job, you know, at the other places that I worked. And, um, and I was doing all this technical editing. And then one of the professors who was the editor for a national magazine for the Institute of Industrial Engineers, he tapped me on the shoulder and said, I'd like you to come and work with me on this magazine. And so I started doing that and I became an editor for this national magazine. So that was my first foray into professional publishing. You know, that was like 40 years ago, right? But that was the history way back when that's where it all began. Then we go into my corporate life. You know, I became an industrial engineer and right away they started having me be a corporate trainer. So I was traveling around teaching all kinds of stuff. And I actually won some awards doing that. And then, um, I got out of being as much of a corporate trainer and I got into a a new plant startup, which was a really big honor as an engineer inside this huge company to be one of the people that they chose to get to do that. So I went off to Portland, Oregon and got to enjoy a beautiful city and start up a new plant. And as part of that, I was doing a lot of training of all the employees, but I was also put in charge of one of of the projects you know, and as an industrial engineer, I'm formally trained in project management. So I just, you know, dusted off all those skills that I'd learned not that long ago. And I, you know, managed the project and I, I won a pretty prestigious award inside that company for the way I managed, you know, this multi-million dollar project. Fast forward, I left that business. I moved back to Pennsylvania and there under a lot of stress at work, I had a complete stress induced meltdown. I mean, you know, you've heard of going up to the edge over stress. Well, I literally hit the wall, went over the wall, fell and, you know, fell into a million pieces on the other side of the wall. I was a basket case because what happened is all this stress 
was taking the lid off a memory I'd suppressed of being raped. And the rape happened when I was 18. I was now 33 years old. But what happened is, you know, the stress caused the memory to surface. The memory surfacing instigated a complete spiritual awakening. So I was going through all this stress at work, which means I wasn't really enjoying my job anymore. And I was having the spiritual awakening. I was knowing things suddenly. My intuition kind of clicked on. And I started studying a lot of spiritual things and new age things and having energy healers and different people work with me and taking classes and stuff because I was trying to put myself back together. I was an emotional mess, you know, and I had a lot of baggage. I was, um, there was some childhood abuse. There was this rape that happened. There was all this uh, heartache and turmoil throughout, you know, my life for the 33 years I'd been on the planet. And so I was turning to these methods to help me become more whole, become happy, find my joy again, all those things, right? And figure out what I really want to do with my life. You know, this other career thing just wasn't working out. I wasn't happy. You know, I'd achieved every goal I set in there. And, but being in a corporate environment, having people tell me what to do all day long, tell me where I have to be and what, you know, what time and how I'm supposed to dress. And I'm like, you know, it's so not me, right? I wear things that are asymmetrical, right? Like even in the corporate world, I set my desk at an angle, right? Because I just, I just didn't fit in this. Everything is like this. And this is how you're expected to be. It just, it was so stifling for my creative, for my creative side and my self-expression and all these different things. And so literally with that sideways desk, uh, the plant manager, at this facility where I was working, came in one day and he goes, is there, is there a significance to this? You know, is there a reason? Cause I used to sign my name sideways too, you know, like you have to sign all these documents periodically, you know, you did, you checked this, you finished this project, whatever you have to sign your name. I always signed it at an angle. So he came in to see like, was there, you know, is there some, some underlying meaning of all this? And I was just, no, I just like it better that way. You know, I like the desk like this. I like to sign sideways. Like, you know, I had no idea it was viewed as weird. Right. But I mean, just, you know, truthfully, I just didn't fit. I did really well. You know, I was very successful at what I was doing, but I wasn't fitting very well. So at 33, after the spiritual awakening and everything, I quit the corporate world. I moved to the San Juan Islands. I co-founded a nonprofit for dolphins and whales. And there Because I was the one with the technical degree. I was the one who was an engineer. It was decided that I would be the one to build the website. So this is like 1996, 1997. I'm building my first website. Okay. There were barely 200,000 websites on the entire World Wide Web. Right? Now there are like, I think, billions. I, I, I don't even know what the number is now. It's crazy, the number now. But back then, there were only 200,000 just barely over, you know, it wasn't 300,000. It was like 200,000 and some websites on the whole World Wide web, you know? And so I put up a website for this nonprofit that we created and that kind of fell away. I moved to Southern California. This woman that I co-founded it with, she moved to Hawaii and, and there were other people doing similar nonprofits. And so we just, you know, kind of let that whole project end. Um, And then I met and then married, you know, my, my, husband and I had a baby and we moved to Canada and all these other things happened. But what part of what happened is um, I was living on top of a mountain in Southern California and I was studying all these internet marketer guys, you know, um, Corey Rudel and Mark Joyner and all these people that have been, you know, that Mark is now a friend, but back then he was like this, you know, internet God, you know, he knew all these things and he was really brilliant. I mean, he still is of course, but you know, now I, he, I wasn't looking at him like this person way off somewhere else. It's someone I know now, you know, but the thing is um, Mark came up with this idea of an ebook that people could download from your website, you know? And so when I heard that, when I heard him talking about it, I was like, Oh, I always wanted to write a book. So I wrote a book and then another one and then another one. And I was writing books. And this was about the year 2000. So in the year 2000 with my own website, um, I was making these PDF books available. I didn't even have a payment gateway. Okay. Like, no, I couldn't take money online. So people, I had a form that they could print out 
And I had people from around the globe. They were sending me checks in the mail, money orders in the mail. And I was getting all this money. And as soon as it arrived, you know, with the form, they'd have their email address. So I would send them this, you know, my book that they had just paid for by check. It was, it was, you know, it was a crazy time, right? Finally, in like 2004, I got a payment gateway and we went and got away from all the check writing and all that. But, you know, I've been in this for a really long time. When my husband and I split, I, um, I started working at a Nissan dealership and literally part-time, mostly from home, I was running the entire internet department for a thriving Nissan dealership in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And we were selling cars left and right. And, you know, it was all because I understood internet marketing because I'd studied all these internet marketing guys. Um, and I was applying that to, to automobile sales. And so that gave me even more experience on, you know, a really competitive market, you know, and I was kicking butt in there, you know, I was getting that dealership on the front page of Google for some very, very competitive keywords. In fact, some of the keywords that I got us ranked for, like the in the first 10 listings on the first page of Google, like New Mexico cars, Santa Fe cars, Santa Fe trucks, those kind of names. We were the only dealership in New Mexico that made that first page right? Every other one was like cars.com, automobile.com, Kelly Blue Book, you know, whatever their URL is. Those are the kind of people because they were nas- nationwide. They had all these advertising dollars. They had teams of people making their websites, you know, and, and so they were everywhere and it was really hard to compete with them, but I did and I did it successfully. So I've been, you know, building websites and helping people rocket, inter- you know, on the internet you know, all those years, you know, as soon as I learned to make my own, I started making them for other people and I still do, you know, and now we do them for our other clients and others who ask. Um, So I had these eBooks going on, right. And somewhere along the way, I got notified that one of my eBooks had won an award. Now I didn't apply for the award. Somebody had submitted it for an award and it won. And I was like, Okay. And I just, you know, I believe in signs. And so I took it as a sign that the universe, I knew I wanted to take one of my eBooks and turn it into a printed book, you know, go into actual printed publishing and and do the whole formal thing. And so in 2012, leading up to 2012, I don't remember how long it took me to do this, but I took one of my eBooks called Peering Through the Veil. And I took the beginning text that had just been a how-to book on meditation for, you know, it was basic at the time, just so people could learn how to meditate. I then just embellished the crap out of it. You know, I added chapter after chapter, after chapter, after chapter, um, you know, vision quests and, and sweat lodges and building medicine wheels and labyrinth walks and, you know, mantra meditations and all these different things. I just, I fleshed it out to become quite a lovely book. And then I sprinkled my own personal stories throughout because over many, many years, as I, you know, when I first woke up spiritually, I started learning to meditate. Dolphin showed up immediately in my meditations unexpectedly. That's a whole other side of what I do. You know, I, I work with their energy healing ability and I have this communication with dolphins and whales and, and the cetacean nation, we call them. And you know, that's this whole other thing, but I began doing this, um, telling stories, you know, and, and so I started adding all these stories to the book and then I got a beta reader team and then I got a professional editor and that book came out, you know, in the whole time that I was since 2000, Every time I could learn anything about publishing, I was learning it. I was reading books. I was going to online summits. I was studying, you know, following and being on email lists by people that are really famous for doing all this stuff. People that have been teaching others how to do it for decades, you know, and then summits started happening specifically for transformational authors and other kind of, you know, online summits happen. I would listen to every single lecture. I would take impeccable notes. Cause like I said, I type really fast, you know, the last time anybody checked, it was 120 words a minute with no errors. 
Okay. And that was a long time ago. It was like a duel. There was another guy. We were, everybody in the whole facility was competing and it came down to two of us, head of accounting and me. And I, I beat him, but you know, like I type really fast. So I take impeccable notes when I'm attending things and studying things by different people. And so I was learning how publishing works the whole time. And I was developing with my engineering and project management skills, a system for me to launch my first book in print. So when I launched my first book in print, it hit the bestseller list right away. I didn't even know that was possible. Like I didn't really get that I was really understanding how all this worked with this first book in print. I was just trying to make sure that I knew how it all happened. You know, how do you get it up on Amazon? How do you promote the thing? How do you, you know, do the blurbs? Like all that stuff was really, I was trying to work out those details for myself to really get it, you know, to really get it. But clearly I got it because it became a best selling book. And so right after that, I invited a group of people that were all around one particular theme to do a collaborative book with me. And so I spent a year helping these people write their chapters and managing it like a project. And that book is Dolphins and Whales Forever. It came out, you know, it hit number one in multiple categories on Amazon. And it's still to this day, it continues to sell well. People find it all the time. They say it's incredible. I know people that keep it on their bed stand. You know, I don't believe in creating books that are purely for uh, promotion purposes. Um, I believe in creating books that are meaningful. You know, the name of my publishing company is Deep Dive Publishers. And that's about diving deep into subjects with messages that matter. That's really the point of the name. And so, you know, we, we make good books great. We work hard. We really dot the I's and cross the T's and feel out intuitively every line, every word to make sure it's correct, to make sure it feels right. Um, and we put out a great piece of work, you know, and we help people hit the bestseller list. So, so far, every single author that we've supported has become a best-selling author. And then they've gone on to do fabulous things. You know, some of my authors have been on television. Some have been someone, one of them spoke at the UN. Another one was in Inc. Magazine. Someone else was on Coast to Coast with George Nori. Um, I wrote down a few names. Some of my authors, they've shared the stage with Jack Canfield and Bob Proctor, Les Brown, John Asaraf, Brian Tracy. You know, they've made some success for themselves. But also what happens with a lot of my um, people is that their life changes too. It's not just that they have an idea for a book and I walk them through all the steps of that and I intuitively tune in and give them insights, not only from my experience, but also from on high really about we should, this would be really great if you did this with this book, you know? So that's based on both the publishing knowledge that I have and experience and this intuitive connection with source, you know, and, and your higher self and guides. I get prompts on ways to promote. I get prompts on you know, ways to tweak the text that it will be better and more meaningful for people and it will help them in a deeper way, that sort of thing. And so the people that I've worked with, in some cases, they've changed their entire lives. You know, one of my authors was very unhappy in the corporate world, but making a lot of money and was very successful and well-known in what he did. Okay. But he wasn't happy. And so working with me, we started working on his life transformation you know, kind of putting the book idea aside a little bit, you know, he came to me as an author client, but, you know, we started working on life transformation right away. And so he went from very unhappy in the corporate world, but making lots of money to being an entrepreneur, making a lot more money. Okay. And I don't know if he's doubled or tripled, but that, you know, he's significantly increased his income and he's doing what he loves with people he enjoys working with, you know, and that's just one story of how that happens. So I help people go from wherever they are to wherever they want to be. And a lot of them talking about more free, more confidence, more um, sure, 
especially of their intuition. You know, I help awaken in people's intuitive abilities. You know, I've had people just in, in classes with me or in private sessions with me, suddenly they're able to hear clairaudiently and they're hearing guides and, and ascended masters and people like that. Now, that is not everyone's cup of tea and it's not required. And I don't talk about that with the people that are uncomfortable with it, right? But it is available. It's part of what I do. So really what I'm here for is to shepherd people who have a message that matters and, and a story that can help other people get out into the world in a big way, in a way that can help you grow your business, get more clients, make more sales, but also in a way that is following your passion, helping you fulfill your mission in life and helping as many people along the way as possible, right? But also affording you earning more money and, and achieving your dreams. Because one of the books that I've written recently was endorsed by Jack Canfield and received the must read seal of approval from Law of Attraction magazine. And that's on how the law of attraction works, how manifesting consciously works, how to really, really achieve all even your wildest dreams. So I know a lot of things about a lot of things. I am what they call a polymath, which means, um, you know, I'm not just shallow in a lot of subjects. I'm really deep in a lot of subjects and I'm fairly good at the things I choose to do. So I look forward to working with you. I hope I can take your book idea and help you get it out into the world in a way that feels good to you and makes a big difference in not only the people who read it, but in your pocketbook. Have a beautiful day.